Welcome to this checkpoint course on threat prevention. So in the previous module, we saw how to configure application control and URL filtering. In this course, we're going to see how to configure antivirus, antibots, and IPS. So we're going to come to the firewall so we're going to double click on the firewall then we'll come to custom threat prevention we'll check this box that says antivirus now we have two options we could set the firewall to detect only so it's going to detect it would not prevent malware or viruses and the rest if you want that you can check this box that says detect only or you could choose to you know configure your antivirus in accordance with the threat prevention policy and of course we would want to share anonymous you know attack information with checkpoints threat cloud so threat cloud is like checkpoints repository checkpoints information gathering portal or lab where you can get you know all devices all checkpoint devices would always send information about viruses malware and everything to the threat cloud and they would also get latest info and you know signature databases from the threat cloud as well so again to check this box that says according to threat prevention policy we'll check this box that says share anonymous attack information with checkpoint threat cloud we'll click on ok we'll check antibots if you remember we said that antibot stops communication between infected systems and remote command and control servers as an example a user might you know take his laptop to the house or you know while at home he might you know use his own personal internet so unintentionally visit malicious websites his laptop becomes infected and then he would bring that same laptop to work the next day now if he brings that laptop to work the very moment that laptop begins to attempt to communicate with you know remote command and control servers checkpoint is going to detect that malicious communication and then it will block it it will block it using this feature called antibots then for ips we want to protect the network so we'll check this box as well okay so having done this we'll click on ok Okay, one more thing. Let's confirm. After checking all those options, you would see that at the left hand side of your firewall that you can configure some features. As an example, let's take a look at antibot and antivirus. So you can choose what to do. Okay, you can choose to anonymize collected data. And you can also choose to receive alerts about you know threats it all depends on what you want another thing that you can do okay would be to come to ips so you can choose whether you want you know ips inspection to be bypassed when the firewall is under heavy load okay so if the ram and CPU usage is very high, then it would begin to bypass, you know, IPS inspection. If that is what you want, you could check this box that says bypass IPS inspection when the gateway is under heavy load. So if you check this, then you can also specify the thresholds. So if you click on, you know, advanced, you can see the gateway load thresholds. You can see the CPU usage. So the very moment the CPU usage 
goes as high as 90% or your RAM goes as high as 90%, then it is going to begin to bypass, that traffic will bypass IPS inspection. And then if your CPU usage and RAM comes down to about 70%, then it can commence, you know, if, if, um, if it comes down, then, you know, it commences the IPS inspection. So you can click on OK. Then uh, having done this, we'll click on OK. Then the very next thing that we're going to do will be to come to security policies. So when we come to security policies, we are going to check this box that says, okay, threat prevention. So we're going to click on custom policy under threat prevention. Now, if you observe, this is how the threat prevention custom policy looks like. But then before you create policies, you need to create profiles. It's very important. So for your threat prevention, you create profiles first before creating policies. So we're going to come down to profiles. We'll click on profiles. Okay, so these are the basic or these are the default profiles that you have. You have basic, you have optimized and you have strict. Now, if you observe, for basic, the only feature that's going to be enabled is IPS. So if you check basic, then you have just IPS working. If you check optimized, you're going to have IPS, you're going to have antibot, you're going to have antivirus, you're going to have threat emulation, and you're going to have threat extraction. Now, if you, if you click on strict, you're going to have the same thing. You're going to have IPS, antibots, antivirus, threat emulation, and threat extraction. But where the difference is, is in the performance impact. So if we open this, okay, the performance impact and also the severity as well. So optimize is going to have medium performance impact on your firewall. But the, the strict is going to have very high, you know, impact. Okay, so what we can do, we're going to right click on strict, we'll clone strict, and then we're going to give the same name. Okay, so let's call this clone, like that is the strict, the clone of strict. Then we'll click on OK. We'll wait for this to get cloned. Okay, so we'll keep on waiting for it to get cloned. So now that the cloning has been completed, we can edit this. So to edit this, we'll just right click on it. Okay, so if you check the blades that are going to participate in, in strict would be, you know, threat emulation, threat extraction, IPS, antibots, and antivirus. Now you can choose to specify the performance impact and also the severity level. But we're going to leave this as it is. Now, just to explain something, low confidence means if the firewall is not really certain that a particular file or a particular type of traffic is malicious if it's not certain what happens would it do you want the firewall to block that traffic or you want it to just detect the traffic that is you can see logs it will permit the traffic but you're going to get logs for that if this is what you want then you can leave this as detect okay so if the firewall has medium confidence that is there's like a 50 to 60 percent confidence that a particular type of traffic is malicious what happens 
okay do you want to prevent um, do you want to detect or you want to prevent the choices yes then high confidence means if the firewall is very certain it is like 80 to 100 percent certain that a particular traffic is malicious what happens so you can choose to detect or you can choose to prevent so for me because i am a proponent of maximum security i'm going to change the activation mode for low confidence i'll change this to prevent so having done this you can also you know configure profiles for mail okay so what happens you know when users are receiving mails now we're going to configure mail when we activate the mail blade we'll configure threat prevention and threat extraction much later but for now let's focus on ips antibots and antivirus okay so when we click on ips we can choose to activate ips you know protections according to these values then we can also configure updates okay so we can say fine set activation okay so we can say set activation as staging mode then we can okay so let's uncheck this okay so we'll just leave this as active okay so newly downloaded protections will be set to active for pretty settings we'll leave everything as it is we'll come to antibots now for antibots if if malicious traffic is detected okay it is going to be blocked and then there's going to be a user check okay same with antivirus so for antivirus there'll be a user check then next we're going to configure the protected scope do you want to you know protect maybe just your LAN, your local area network or do you want to protect you know um do you want to inspect do you want to inspect incoming files that are coming from you know external and dmz or you want to inspect all files for me i'll choose to inspect incoming and outgoing files okay you can choose to inspect files coming from all interfaces both external and dmz okay well this is fine okay let's leave it as external and you know and dmz it's fine as well for the protocol okay we want to inspect http and https we want to inspect ftp we want to inspect server message block for the file type we're not just going to be processing file types that are known to contain malware we want to inspect every single file type and we want deep inspection scanning yes so that it will scan every single thing deeply then another thing for archives we want to scan archive files okay so we're going to change this to block then we can increase the time we can say okay you can scan this for as much as say maybe 90 seconds so we do not want like a timeout for the scanning okay so we can leave this at 90 seconds and then we'll say okay maximum time like um, if the maximum time is exceeded what happens we want to block the file okay because some archive files can contain malware okay so having done this they were going to so we're going to click on ok then remember we said we'd have to configure profiles first and then after configuring profiles next we're going to configure policies so we'll come to threat prevention policy we'll change this from advanced to strict that is a clone of strict having done this then we're going to install our policy but one more thing before you install policy we can come down to ips protections okay there are lots of things that we could do down here 
Okay, so when we click on IPS protections, we'll wait for this to come up. Now, it's a saying that IPS protection is not up to date. So we need to update this. So we're going to update this. This is fine. Now, th th there are lots of things that you could do, okay? For example, let's say, if you remember, there was this Apache, you know, um, there was this log4j attack that came out recently. Oh, okay, it's now here. So what we need to do to protect against Apache log4j, we would need to update IPS. Okay, so when we've updated IPS, we'll come back and then configure, you know, lots of things as well. Okay, let's say something. So if there is unusual activity, we we'll want to prevent it. If there's suspicious mail outbreak, we'll prevent. Okay, for reputations, we want to prevent. Same, we're going to be preventing. We'll prevent this as well. For viruses, we want to prevent. URLs with malware, we're preventing. Exploit detection, we're going to prevent. Malicious activity, prevent. Unusual activity, prevent. Links inside emails, prevent. We can just choose to prevent, okay? Advanced file, okay, so we'll just select prevent for everything. Then we'll come to updates and then compose really. We need to update this IPS. Okay, so this needs to be a okay. So let's schedule updates. Let's update everything. You can schedule when you want your updates to take place, whether you want it to take place every two hours or daily, as the case may be. Okay, so having done this, the very next thing that we're going to do would be to install policy. So we'll wait for policy installation to get completed. So for IPS, we'll click on updates now. So the IPS needs to get updated. Okay, let's click on updates now. So it says downloading updates package. So we'll just wait for that to get completed. After it has been completed, then we can run a test. So as you can see, it's performing the IPS management updates. So in the next module, we are going to configure threat prevention and threat emulation, and then we're going to run a test on the CP CheckMe portal. With this, we've come to the end of this particular module. I'll meet you in the next one. Thank you.